Leslie Frazier has decided to take the year off from coaching in 2023. I don't know about you all, but this is definitely not the news that I anticipated hearing this morning on February the 28th, 2023. I fully expected the Buffalo Bills to go into this season um, just, just, just bringing it back, right? The same coaches, the same coaching staff, all that kind of stuff, right? Um, you know, we know about about Ken Dorsey, and we knew about Leslie Frazier, and and you know, uh, at the end of the season, I thought that they were just just going to run it back with the same coaches. They didn't make any moves at the at the defensive coordinator position. They decided to bring in um, Salgano to be the new safeties coach, and then they brought in Al Holcomb to be the new senior defensive assistant, which essentially took Eric Washington's place because you remember Eric Washington had that dual title as assistant uh as as a senior defensive assistant slash D line coach. But for all as, as far as all we knew, Leslie Frazier was returning this year as the Bills defensive coordinator. Well guess what? All of that decided to blow up on all of our faces this morning as news came out. Uh the Buffalo Bills put out um as a matter of fact this came out from Bills PR Right, the Bills PR put this out saying that Leslie Frazier has decided to take a year off from coaching in 2023, and he plans to return to coaching next year. So let's try to digest that if, if, if we can. There's a lot to chew on. Um, news just just came out, and so I know everybody's talking about it. We're trying to figure out what's going on and what that really means. Um, it, to me, it, I mean, it sounds like Leslie's taking a sabbatical. Right. You know, I've never heard of that. A, a coach decides to take a year off, you know, from coaching, um, especially this late in the game. You know, I was a big proponent. You guys know it. Um, at the end of the season, I was a huge proponent of, of staff changes. Like I was like, yo, I need some heads to be rolled right now. I, I need some heads. Show me some heads. I need a pound of flesh. Get rid of Dorsey and get rid of Frazier. I've had enough of them. I've had enough. You know what I'm saying? And And, and when you look at, and I know, I know people may be like, yo, Rev, you tripping, man. You know, uh, Leslie's had a top defense. Yeah, I get it. I get it, right? I mean, Leslie, uh, by, by, all, by all accounts, right, when you look at the Buffalo Bills stats, the Bills last year um, and, t- and team defense were ranked number two behind the Niners. Behind the Niners, right? Um, they, they, the, the defense plays well in the regular season. That's the key. In the regular season, the Bills' defense plays extremely well. They put up stats. They put up the numbers. They're top five defense, right? They've been that. They've been that way. But for me, where I kind of lost favor for Frazier was has has been in the postseason, right? As the as the standards have changed and as the standards have risen for this team, so have the expectations. And I just speak for myself. My expectations are high, right? I mean, this is no longer the playoff, the 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 the, the drought team, right? We're not the drought era Bills anymore. And that's kudos to 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 Sean McDermott, to Brandon Bean, and the coaching staff, which includes Leslie Frazier. They've done a great job during their tenure so far, right? And so they've elevated the standards that we, and so the expectations arise along with the standards. They came into this year. Well, the past year as Super Bowl favorites, bar none, Super Bowl favorites, they whiffed, right? And we saw what happened in the playoffs. I get the whole regular season thing and what, you know, the team had to endure. I understand it, adversity, I get it. But this is not just a one-year thing, right? We talked about it um, immediately after the Bills playoff game against the, or the debacle of a game because they didn't even really play that game. It was weird against the Bengals. We talked about this ad nauseum. This is what the Bills' defense has has put up in the playoffs under Leslie Frazier and Sean McDermott, namely Leslie Frazier. You can see right now on the screen, Bills' defensive coordinator, Leslie Frazier, in the playoffs, 107 points allowed and 1,403 yards allowed in the last three playoff losses. The last three playoff losses, 
That, ladies and gentlemen, to me, is unacceptable. Unacceptable. Completely unacceptable. You cannot, you cannot go forward with that type of a defense. You just can't. And and I'm not too sure, you know, what's been going on on the defensive side of the ball, you know, with, with coaching. I, for me, I think that – I think I, I, it's hard for me to say that the game has passed Frazier by. I just think that, at, you know, there comes a point in time when, when certain coaches are just stuck in their ways, right? They're just stuck in their ways, and they just refuse to move. They refuse to evolve. They refuse to change. And it, that, that could be the case with Frazier, right? I mean, he's known for this, you know, cover two – bend but don't break type of a defense and it's worked for years other teams have 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 deployed this type of a defense and it works at times <laughs> it's worked in the regular season for the bills but not, not at the postseason i think things need to change because you know this is not the 2000s anymore it's not the 90s you know uh the nfl it's not the early 2000s you know when you've got hard nose smash mouth football going on it's not that type of a game anymore. You have to be aggressive. You, you're going up against offensive juggernauts now in a league that has altered its rules to favor offensive output. And then on top of that, you've got guys like Pat Mahomes, Joe Burrow, Justin Herbert. Now Jalen Hurts coming along the scene, along with Josh Allen. You've got these type of quarterbacks who are who are elite and they are willing to take the check down. They are willing to slice and dice you up and down the field. Death by a million paper cuts, so to speak. And so when you have this this bend but don't break defense, the mentality of that defense is you know, we'll, we'll, we'll give you yardage, right? We'll let you march down the field, but in the red zone, we're going to lock it up and you're not going to score on us. That's that type of mentality, right? <laughs> but when you're going against these type of offensive juggernaut teams, they will gladly march down the field. And guess what? Unless you have a legit, tough red zone defense, get, it's not going to work. And we've seen that. It has not worked for the Bills. It really hasn't. That defense... um, it needs to change. There needs to be some type of changes, some philosophical changes, in my opinion, right? I mean, you, we've, we've heard Leslie Frazier talk about this ad nauseum about how, you know, for them, their their philosophy is all about the front four, like, like getting after the passer, right, uh, with four, getting after the quarterback with just four, only rushing four, dropping everybody else back in coverage. Well, you don't have an elite pass rush, okay? And then teams now, they're not really just going to sit there and let you get after them, right? If you Even if you had an elite pass rush, they're going to get rid of the ball fast in a way that, that, that negates your pass rush, okay? And if you're playing cover two, this, especially this with this zone, this soft zone that they play, <laughs> elite quarterbacks are going to eat that up. They say, like, oh, are you going to take away the deep ball? Fine, that's, that's okay. Well, I'll just, I'll just be, we'll just be content marching down the field. And here's a game plan to beat the Bills, right? Because when you look at the opposite sideline and you'll see a guy like Josh Allen on the sideline, how do you defeat him? What's the game plan against teams that have elite quarterbacks with weapons on offense? What's the game plan? Here it is. You ready for it? Keep them on the sideline as long as possible, <laughs> right? Because at the end of the day, you're not really going to stop these offenses from scoring. So what you have to do is keep them on the sideline as long as possible. How do you do that? Long, sustaining drives. Take what the defense gives you. Be willing to take the check down, dink and dunk all the way down the field. Sustain these drives. Eat up a ton of clock. So that way, that other guy on the other side of the sideline can sit there on the sideline. You keep their offense off the field as long as you can, right? And then you make sure that you score when you get the chance. Not three points, not, no field goals, touchdowns. So when, you, so when you think about that, and you think about the game plan to stop these kind of offenses, and then you look at the way I, we play defense, it just, 
it just lends itself to that type of offense. You, you're essentially, as a defense, with that type of philosophy, when you have Josh Allen on your team, what you're doing is you're allowing the other team to beat you just by the way you are playing defense. You're not aggressive. You're not trying to get them off the field fast. You're willing to let them march all the way down the field. And then all of a sudden, in the red zone, you're going to just tighten it up. That's the game plan to beat a Josh Allen. And Leslie Frazier's defense is allowing the other team to do that. There's no aggressive nature. There's nothing. Very rarely do they blitz. They rely on the front four. But what happens when a guy like Von Miller goes out? We saw what happened, right? When Von Miller tore his ACL in Thanksgiving, in the Thanksgiving game, what happened to the rest of the defensive line? <laughs> Greg Rousseau, nothing. Shaq Lawson, nothing. Ed Oliver, nothing. Nothing happened. So they relied heavily on Vaughn Miller getting after the quarterback. But when that does not work, you have to change things up. And we saw what happened in the postseason. We barely escaped the Dolphins, right? But then when you look at what happened against the Bengals, I get it. Players are saying, you know, we just ran out of gas. That was a defense. That, that was an, a, a coaching blunder. We saw what happened, right? I and mean, we've seen what happened over the past couple of years. I mean, let's go back. Should, do I need to do this? Yeah, I'm going to do it. Look at this. What is this? Last year against the Chiefs in the divisional round playoff game, we see this. We see this type of a defense being called 13 seconds. Remember that? Yeah, you remember that. You remember that? Allowing Patrick Mahomes. And the Kansas City Chiefs with Travis Kelsey and then Tyreek Hill marched down the field. You essentially gave them the opportunity to play for the tie to get into overtime by this type of defense right here. Everybody is backed way off the line of scrimmage, right? Cornerbacks are five to I mean, seven yards plus off of the line of scrimmage. Linebackers, way off. 15 yards back. They're playing the sidelines. And at that time, the Kansas City Chiefs had all of their timeouts. They essentially allowed them to march down the field and to settle for a field goal to go into overtime. And the rest was history. And what happened after that game? Oh, we learned from it. We're learning from it. That's what the coaches said. Oh, we're going to learn from it. Did they really? Okay, let's take a look at something else. What happened this year against the Bengals? You see it. Look at that still photo. Third and four. So now the Bills are becoming a moniker, right? You have 13 seconds and now followed by third and four. And here it is, third and four, the Bengals. <sighs> they need to get a, a they need four yards for a first down. And you have this soft zone coverage. Tredavious White, top of the screen, going against Jamar Chase, much bigger, stronger, more physical wide receiver. And here is Trey playing seven yards deep. Seven yards deep. He's he's three yards behind the first down marker. And we expect to, to Davies White in the snow, mind you, coming off of a torn ACL when we clearly see that he has not been himself. You think that he's going to make the stop on third and four against Jamar Chase? Absolutely not. And did it happen? Absolutely not. They played that type of soft coverage all day long. They gave them the win. And then on top of that, you missed Daquan Jones. So now the run game was just the run defense was exposed. You see, these are the type of these type of changes need to happen. And so, so Frazier deciding to take a year off from football from coaching this year may be a blessing in disguise for the Bills defense. We'll see what happens going forward. But it just might be a blessing in disguise. I'm curious to know you guys' thoughts on this. You know, uh, what 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 will Sean McDermott do now? Because now when you look at it, like, I wonder if this just hit them like last minute or if this is something that they had been thinking about or they've already known this. Because if they know if they knew this for a while. And there's been no movement. Then I question McDermott's decisions, right? But they threw in this little thing about how, well, he plans to return in 2024. 
Now, it didn't necessarily say he plans to return with the Bills. It just says he plans to return to coaching in 2024. So let's jump in real quickly to what are some potential candidates? Like, like what can we expect Sean McDermott to do now going forward? I think now when you look at the coaching staff, um, we see the we see the additions, right? Let's take a look at it one more time here. Um, this is put up put out by the Bills um, PR team. Let's look at it. We have Al Holcomb named senior defensive assistant. All right. We know what happened uh, with the safeties coach with uh, Salgado. He's a new safety coach. Eric Washington um, is no longer the senior defensive assistant. He's just now the D-line coach. But now Al Holcomb comes over to be the senior defensive assistant, in my opinion. I think I think they just go with in-house. I think bringing on Al Holcomb was, was the, 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 the future plan. All right. He was probably the guy to, to, that they are looking at to take over the defensive coordinator position in the future. They had that with, with Eric Washington when he was a senior defensive assistant, but the D line has not been that good under Eric Washington so far. So they stripped that, they stripped that title from him, brought in Al Holcomb. And now we're going to see what he's going to do. And I think it's going to be a joint effort between Al Holcomb, the rest of the defensive coaching staff and Sean McDermott likely to be calling plays on the defense. That's what I think is going to happen this year. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a short-term thing. We don't know what's going to happen next year. We don't know if they're going to bring Frazier back next year or what. I, it, I don't think that they're going to bring in a guy externally to be a one-year rental. I don't think that's what's going to happen, especially this, this late in the game when all of these coaching candidates are, are, are already hired. They're already on staffs. And you've got free agency coming. I mean, you, I mean, they're right now in the middle of the combine. You've got that going on. You've got free agency, you know, and then you've got the draft right after that. It's kind of late. I think they're going with the in-house candidates right now. Al Holcomb, Eric Washington, Sean McDermott, calling plays. That's what I think. You guys let me know what you think in the comments below. Uh, do you think that this, uh, I mean, what do you think about the about this decision? Like, is it good for the Bills? Is it bad for the Bills? Are we really going to miss Leslie Frazier? Who will Sean McDermott bring in to be the DC? Or will Sean McDermott take over those duties himself? We will find out soon, soon enough. But for me, where I am right now, I am at a position where it's all about offense for me. It's all about the offense for me. I, I, I'm already expecting somewhat of a regression defensively because of the, the amount of free agents, right? I'm already expecting that. Uh, but then you got new coaches coming in, right? You've got Salgado. You've got Al Holcomb. They're, these guys are coming in trying to get acclimated. Um, I, I think there might be a slight regression. But I'm not concerned about that because when it's all said and done, when it, when it matters the most in the postseason, at, at the end of the day, it's about offense, man. It's, it's about offense. Defense no longer wins championships. Coaching and offensive output does. Coaching and offensive output does. And you will hear more from me about that particular topic soon. If not later today, probably tomorrow. So stay tuned right now. I've already got it in the works. It's already a done deal. But, man, this Frazier news came out of nowhere. We had to talk about it. Um, let me know your thoughts. Again, my man Rico's going to come in tonight. No doubt he's going to be talking about it. This is a huge topic of conversation right now. Leslie Frazier takes a sabbatical from coaching in 2023. Until next time, ladies and gentlemen, grace and peace. God bless. It's your man Rev. As always, go Bills. Let's get it. Yeah.